Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar of the OSIRIS project. OSIRIS stands for Open Social Innovation Policies Driven by Co-Creative Regional Innovation Ecosystems. So it is all about finding new ways of engaging citizens in activities that make their lives better in different ways. My name is Yvonne Backholm, and I am part of the OSIRIS team. This is the first in a series of webinars that the OSIRIS partners are launching to seek answers to questions like, what did we learn from working with co-creation, open and social innovation for regional development during the pandemic? What learning experiences do we take with us for the future? And what smart solutions or insights from this period will actually change our work in the future. This first webinar is brought to you by the Autonomous Province of Trento, where all project partners actually meet live right now. So let us start by having a look at the beautiful territory hosting us. We're going to see a video that was produced during the pandemic and captures an important and positive aspect of that experience, a renewed sensitivity to nature. Nature is the wealth of the territory that hosts us right now. And we have now, during the time we've been here, seen how the challenges of climate change and the pandemic have been faced in this beautiful part of the world. Let's watch the video. Ciao. Mi riconoscete? Sono la natura. È tanto che non ci vediamo, eh? Io ho approfittato di questa pausa che ci siamo presi per rimettermi in forma. E vi confesso che mi sento benissimo. Spero che questa separazione forzata vi abbia dato modo di ripensare al nostro rapporto con una rinnovata consapevolezza. Confido che scopriremo nuovi modi di stare insieme, facendo dell'equilibrio e del rispetto la nostra forza. Vi aspetto per un nuovo inizio. beautiful video uh, from the region where we actually are right now. I leave the floor or the screen rather to the people of uh, this region actually working here and the moderator Elisa Morganti of the Innovation Hub uh, Trentino is going to, uh, to guide us through the day. So the screen is yours Elisa. Thank you very much Yvonne. Uh, I'm Elisa Morganti from Hub Innovazione Trentino. I'm here to guide you in this, uh, this webinar for the next uh, less than one hour. So uh, Hub Innovazione Trentino, first of all, uh, is a foundation that is dealing with technology transfer and innovation on behalf of the province of Trento. As Hub Innovazione Trentino, we have uh, uh, four shareholders, including two uh, research centers, the Fondazione Edmund Mack, Fondazione Bruno Kessler, the University of Trento, the, um, the development agency of the province and the province itself that is um, supporting us. So what we are doing to, today, what the, we were asked to, to do is to show some hints, some examples of how the innovation ecosystem in Trentino reacted and exploited the, the pandemics the COVID-19 pandemics, showing some of the examples of uh, how the innovation ecosystem did, dealt with this and what opportunities emerged from this uh, very difficult situation and one, what we can want to bring for the future. So today I'm here with the three, um, three guests, three speakers that uh, will uh, talk about different aspects, these different uh, uh, um, innovation uh, actions that were fully impacted by the, uh, by the pandemics and from, from which we learned a lot. So first of all, uh, we will have uh, 
we will have the Matteo Previdi from the province of Trento, and uh, he will show how the pandemics uh, enabled new forms of uh, dialogue among different parts of the, the administration and also with the citizen that are having uh, the, with the scope of uh, coping with the, the, the emergency. Then we will have Alessandro Gretter from Fondazione Ed Bumac, and he will, he will show a, a very specific case of a, a project that we were fully impacted from the pandemics. And so we have a lot of issues related to this, but also new collaboration and new, new form of visioning emerged from this, uh, um, this impact. At the end, we will have Nicola Doppio from Ab Innovazione Trentino. Nicola is, has, been, uh, um, has been organizing uh, um, innovation challenges since uh, four years, I think four or five years, so you will be more precise than me. And th these innovation challenges are form of co collaboration among different from companies, students, mentors, coaches, and, that, and it worked a lot in person. And so Nicola had to rethink how to restructure and manage this new form, uh, this new, these types of, of events in, uh, um, in response to the pandemics. And he also will show what we learned and how we really um, um, do something new starting from what we learned. So how it works now, each of the speakers will do a, a short presentation of themselves, uh, their institution, and of the topic, the core of the discussion. And after that, uh, I will ask them a couple of questions and to, to see really what, what were the, uh, what we, um, how the COVID impacted on these activities and what we want to bring to the future as a, an opportunity, a new start. So I want to leave the floor to Matteo, first of all. And Matteo, please share your screen and start your presentation. Thank you, Elisa. Okay. So thank you, Elisa, and thank you, Yvonne, for the beautiful presentation. I'm Matteo Previdi. I'm currently working as a project manager for the Autonomous Province of Trento in the, for the Simplification and Digitalization Strategic Unit. I will talk about the experience of Reparti Trentino which was mainly a program of uh, financial aids that the local authority, the autonomous province, provided to the local businesses in order to overcome the consequences of the pandemic and especially the, the social and economic consequences of the pandemic. So, especially for uh, our non-Italian viewers, uh, this is uh, how the pandemic looked in our, uh, in our country and in our region, uh, especially, and how it impacted our territory. So we saw the, we witnessed the first episodes of uh, infection in the late February of 2020, and uh, also in highly tourist uh, areas. So the first wave of COVID started in February and reached its uh, peak during March, when uh, the national and the local government were forced to impose mobility restriction on the 9th of March, and then to close non-essential businesses on the 26th of March. This situation lasted uh, for almost uh, three months, when then in the, and in the early summer, we we saw a slow, a slow return to normality. But then in around uh, the beginning of the, the winter, in the fall, in October, we saw the second wave of COVID, which uh, struck uh, also really hard. And also similar restrictions were, um, were, were imposed by the authority. So this, uh, this kind of scenario uh, impacted, uh, had an high impact on our economy because our economy is uh, highly dependent on, the, on tourism, uh, as you can see, as you can see. So we, we saw a decrease of 39% uh, of arrivals in our territory uh, due to the fact that uh, the 2019-2020 winter season early, had an early ending in uh, February. And the 2020-21 season never started because of the restriction. 
So overall, the uh, local GDP decrease in Trentino was about 8.7%, uh, returning to values of uh, six or seven years ago. So uh, this, um, to this situation, uh, as you can imagine, the, the authorities had to respond. Uh, and uh, the main issue was uh, to respond in a really fast way in order to, to overcome the, the, economic, uh, the economic difficulties that businesses were experiencing. So to, to implement a really, a really fast uh, uh, project and a really fast uh, measures, uh, one of the keys was, to, was digitalization. The Reparty Trentino program is mainly, um, was mainly a, a platform, a digital platform that was built uh, to provide uh, this financial support uh, to companies and to citizens. And um, so the, the main core of the program was the, the digitalization of the process, of the processes of uh, presenting and then giving the, the contribution, the, the money to, to businesses. And uh, this, uh, this, this, this digitalization of the process uh, really really have a, a nice impact on the, the, the procedural times uh, necessary to, to, give, uh, to give the money to the to local businesses. Another, another key point of the program was the, the user centricity. Um, the main interface of the of Reparti Tentino was a website, uh, the website Reparti Tentino, in which users could find all the information about, uh, about these, uh, these financial aids. Uh, and also they could understand if, if they were eligible to the, to the, to the financial aid and for, uh, for which amount of uh, the financial aid they were eligible to. So in this case, the key was to anticipate users need uh, in order to, to speed up the, the, the provisioning of information to them. Uh, and to yeah, and, and to speed up all the all the processing connected to it. Another another um, another key of the project, uh, and uh, it's that is really linked to what we are uh, uh, doing with Osiris. It was the was the stakeholder involvement. Um, in order to do to these things so fast uh, and so effectively we had to involve uh, different types of stakeholders, both local and national, uh, mainly of the stakeholders of the, um, of the innovation and economic ecosystem. Every stakeholder played uh, a different uh, role, played this role in a different phase of the program. And um, also the, the, the key to manage all these stakeholder, stakeholders was a, a strong governance from the uh, province, which uh, coordinated all the Reparti Trentino project and was able to, to put uh, these stakeholders in the right place at the right time in order to, to speed up the project and the recovery of the system. So to briefly sum up and to, to leave to my colleagues uh, the, to, and to their presentation, uh, the result was, was that uh, 27 to this day, different financial aids were activated and more than 5,000 applications for financial aid were sent and processed with this digital platform. The, as I, I was saying before, the, the, the main impact was the procedural time that was reduced to a minimum of 24 hours uh, from the presentation, from the application to the, to the um, to the delivery of the of the money, so this was a, an historic for us a result because, as you know, the the, bureaucra the bureaucracy and uh, all the procedures connected to this uh, to this uh, process could be uh, could be really long. So, digitization was uh, uh, for us uh, uh, the key, and also uh, involving all these different stakeholders and actor was. Uh, the really main uh, main uh, value of the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matteo, and that you showed how, how the pandemic had uh, sped up some processes that should be 
already enact in the, in the province, and so this is can be one of the first sign of uh, of uh, the that the pandemics can uh, last uh, over this period. Hopefully, I want to uh, give the floor to Alessandro Gretter from uh, Fondazione Edmund Mack. So, Alessandro, please, if you have to share the presentation. Um, As I told you, Alessandro will uh, be specific on, uh, on a project that, that, that open different scenarios from them. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, and I, I hope that you can see properly my screen. No, uh, not really. No, not really. Pardon. I guess that now is supposed to work properly. It's coming. If you want to start talking about, I think it will come. Yes, I guess it's that, there. It's there. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Alessandro Gretter. Um, I was the lead partner of the project uh, called Satur. I want to say something. Um, few few sentences about us, uh, about my institution. So I'm working. Uh, in one of the bodies, part of the Trentino Research Innovation Ecosystem, the Fondazione del Mac, that has been settled in 1874. And we are operating in particular in three, in three areas of expertise, uh, mainly connected to the rural economy. Our experiences uh, are, is to work for and with uh, um, the local stakeholders and together with them uh, to find solution. Uh, this also happened during the, the, the pandemics and uh, the project Satur is uh, probably one of the best uh, uh, experiences uh, and witnessing of these kind of approaches. So Satur uh, is the acronym of uh, a project called System and Sustainable Approaches to Virtuous Interaction of Urban and Rural Landscape that actually taking together three different countries, Sweden, United Kingdom, and different uh, territorial uh, bodies from uh, metropolitan cities like Birmingham, uh, or big cities like Göteborg in Sweden, and also um, small villages and municipalities uh, in the Alps. So um, our vision was to reconnect uh, the, um, the landscape and uh, try to learning from the past, uh, understanding the present, uh, and be able to solve the challenges of the future. And in particular, uh, maybe just to reconnect to the video that I started this session, we, one of the aim was also to connect with nature again. So actually, our aim was to build a framework to help the citizen to understanding the narratives behind our landscape. We collaborated with uh, the AT Climate Kids. Actually, the idea was also to take in this systemic approach in order to understand the way in which we can uh, try to mitigate uh, or adapt uh, our communities to the to the emerging problem of uh, uh, climate uh, climate change, but as Elisa said, uh, we we pandemics was actually uh, entering uh, into our life pretty pretty early during the the, the, the life uh, life project time, and um, we have been uh, adopting some sort of soft innovation and, and soft theories. Uh, in order to try to solve some of the emerging uh, problematics that uh, the pandemic brought to us. In particular, it's appear very clearly, uh, as I say, that uh, maybe we will we'll emerge later on during the discussion, that actually we, we have been called to, within our experiences, to give some, uh, at least three different way, to give a feedback to our stakeholders, to our, uh, not only to our partner, but um, mainly to all the territories and communities that have been involved. The, the first one was really, really more practical. So roughly speaking, to feed the citizens. So we, we built on, a, on already ongoing experiences. And so actually three tried to provide fresh vegetables and curry fruits to the citizens of Trento, giving the opportunity through the public administration to create a network of uh, distribution, distribution of food and beverage to, um, from local small, small holders, uh, companies that land in the city, city capital of Trentino, Trento. Second one was about um, strategical because actually this way of connect people 
bringing them food also, bringing the, the, the opportunity also to let, let having people discussing together, so overcoming bridges between different stakeholders and open up opportunity for mutual co-development solutions. Not lastly, the idea uh, moving from the strategical part was to create future opportunities to share, for example, vision of the future, because we know that uh, in many cases, as pandemic was an expected uh, uh, event, uh, we have to thinking about to have some sort of a future proof uh, communities and group of stakeholders able to cope with different uh, and emerging issues. The project was, uh, has been uh, ended a few months ago at the end of 2021, uh, but actually we, we are very proud to have uh, left something uh, over and uh, in the hand of uh, our stakeholders and uh, maybe to be used from other people that actually was not directly connected and involved in the project. The first of all was to create a CSA, a community support agriculture, an idea that started in, uh, uh, during the pandemics and have been uh, grew up in 2021 and actually has been uh, supported and will be fully supported for uh, hopefully uh, some years ago in the future from the another community of the T that is AT Food, that actually to create a digital physical platform, not only where, where exchange food uh, and product, but also dialogue between the small, order, small orders and the eaters. So it means that the citizens that actually are need to to find uh, the right uh, elements to, to for, for their local diet. The second part is, uh, as we were looking for a new balance, is really to enlarge uh, the dialogue with uh, older generations uh, and young generation. We set it up during the, the second wave of the pandemics, uh, an event that is called 40-40-40. So actually 40 young people aged under, uh, aged under uh, 40 years old to looking forward to year 2040. Uh, in order to balance uh, in an area like the Guard Lake area, so a very tourism area, the way uh, how to keeping together local well-being and uh, for uh, for residents uh, and the opportunity for people coming from from uh, abroad and outside. So actually, this is really central for our regional economy. And not lastly, um, we encouraged ourselves. Uh, to try to give a, a longer life for the, the methods and tools we have uh, created to support a pathway for defining more sustainable resilient communities, in particular, for example, to, um, to helping them, helping, helping the local administration, but uh, a series of stakeholders to planning their pathway to the future. So actually, as you can see in the bottom right uh, uh, side of the, this slide, on the, on the screen, uh, there is, for example, the timeline uh, in the way in which, for example, reaching the target of a, of a common vision for 2050 in um, that actually we developed in a, in a, in a, in a subgroup or sub-valley uh, sub of a municipality in Trentino, Borgo Vassidana. So actually, these are some of the, the way in which we try to uh, not only um, taking all the worst side of the pandemics, but actually taking these uh, like pandemics was an opportunity to, to set up and create something. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. I'm sorry for the <laughs> bell slide, the ringing. And uh, I want to leave the floor to Nicola Doppio from Ab Innovazione Trentino, and they will talk about uh, the innovation challenges as tool for innovation. Thank you so much, Elisa. Thank you all, uh, especially the organizers for um, inviting us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicola Doppio. I am based in Trento, north of Italy, and I work at uh, HIT, which stands for Hub Innovazione Trentino. Um, I will show you a few slides about what I do at HIT, and afterwards, during the roundtable that will be hosted by Elisa, we'll tell you more about how you know, COVID-19 impacted the way that we do open innovation at HIT. So, um, as Elisa mentioned, the, first of all, HIT is a um, public uh, foundation for technology transfer. And our role is to uh, connect researchers and companies uh, in Trentino and beyond uh, uh, with the aim of uh, making it possible for companies to um, exploit the results of the research that has been done in Trentino. And uh, in, this, in this slide, you can see the four shareholders of uh, HIT, uh, University of Trento, but also Fondazione uh, Bruno Kessler, Fondazione Edmund Bach, 
enter into no sviluppo. And there's a fifth shareholder, which is the, uh, the province of Trento, the autonomous province of Trento, who entered uh, the um, uh, HAT uh, earlier on uh, this year. So our role is really to connect all these players in a way that innovation can uh, take place uh, in Trentino. We are about 28 people. So far, we, has been, we have been launched in 2016, and we are uh, still uh, growing. So what they do at HAT is um, uh, managing uh, open innovation formats, uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, most of the participants to this call know what uh, uh, open innovation is already. Uh, what we try to do at HAT is to uh, create and manage formats that make it possible for companies to engage in open innovation with uh, researchers. So this is more like a research industry open innovation, what we try to do at HAT. And to do that, starting 2016, we tried to uh, design formats to making it uh, happen in the very uh, short time frame, like uh, you know, one or two months or maybe uh, three months uh, to make it possible for companies to bring home some inputs uh, uh, for them to um, engage in, uh, in innovation with, uh, with researchers. And uh, we started looking into the, uh, the concept of innovation prizes or innovation challenges or also known as uh, innovation contests. Uh, innovation prizes has been uh, existing, you know, uh, for centuries. And they are about uh, publishing a big challenge, a big uh, um, technological or uh, innovation challenge uh, uh, to the public. And on the other side, um, selecting the best solutions that are, um, uh, that are brought by so-called solvers, normally uh, a large number of solvers. And uh, normally these accounts for uh, societal challenges. So like putting a man on the moon, as you can see from this slide. What we did at HAT was uh, uh, taking this uh, open innovation uh, prize approach and scaling it down to a regional uh, level in a way that it could be used to find solutions to, uh, to product development uh, processes and product, product development problems uh, that would be experienced by SMEs. Okay? So we wanted to support many SMEs at time with researchers in doing product innovation, basically. Okay? So the first open innovation contest that we launched in 2017 um, was about supporting SMEs in designing better uh, digital products and services, especially designing better uh, human computer interfaces or um, uh, uh, user interfaces, especially graphical user interfaces. And we did that because on one side in Trentino, we have a lot of ICT companies. And on the other side, we have uh, in the research uh, um, uh, in the research centers at, at the University of Trento as well a lot of very good competencies about uh, um, uh, human machine interfaces and human computer interaction. So we designed an innovation contest to connect the companies and researchers around these topics of designing better human computer uh, interfaces, and we came up with the, uh, the UX challenge. The UX challenge is a, uh, I mean, initially it came from, it, it came as a two-day event, so very close to a hackathon. And I will tell you afterwards how COVID-19 changed this format for the good. So the UX challenge is a, 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 went initially as a two-day event where companies would, could engage with young talents, most, mostly university students, uh, but also uh, researchers acting as mentors to test and redesign uh, interfaces of digital products such as software, mobile apps, uh, or, uh, or web apps, but also more complicated products such as industrial um, uh, products. And um, it basically uh, works as a uh, design sprint, a two days design sprint. A design sprint is a, a practical methodology that was invented by Google Ventures, the accelerator, uh, startup accelerator of Alphabet, Google, to support their own startups in, in improving the usability and, and, and finding solutions to design problems uh, uh, regarding digital products and services. So we basically uh, um, squeezed the design sprint uh, into a two-day event to host the UX challenge. As you can see, the fifth phase of the design sprint is about uh, testing, testing uh, ideas of solution. And we do that by engaging real, uh, real people, citizens. We have a large database of citizens that are invited to take part to uh, the, uh, the UX challenge. And the results of the UX challenges are uh, prototypes of newly designed uh, um, interface uh, um, um, 
uh, interface uh, uh, um, uh, designs that the companies can, uh, as to say, bring home uh, to innovate or to optimize or to improve the current version of their uh, existing products uh, and services. And this is uh, done in only uh, two days uh, uh, with teams uh, of young talents, such as university students, supported by researchers and, and freelancers in, in, in other cases. Okay, So that is the UX challenge. And we have been running it uh, since uh, 2017. We have supported uh, around 35 companies altogether. Every year we select uh, um, five or more companies and we select on the other side some 50 solvers working on uh, these challenges. And uh, in 2021, the UX challenge took place not only in Trento, but also in other uh, six European countries from Finland to Spain, as you can see from this slide. Um, this was possible thanks to a uh, Horizon 2020 InnoSoup uh, 6 uh, project coordinated by HIT um, that entailed with replicating the UX challenge in, in the other countries with the aim of evaluating the impact on SMEs. Altogether, we involved almost 200 small and medium enterprises, and we organized a big, a big uh, A-B test, a big randomized controlled trial study uh, where some of the companies uh, entered the UX challenge, while the rest of the companies didn't do the UX challenge, but we measure a number of uh, uh, information before and after uh, the participation uh, to the UX challenge. And we demonstrated that participating uh, to the UX challenge increases uh, uh, the knowledge and the capability of uh, SMEs to uh, adopt uh, user-centered design and design thinking um, techniques during uh, new product development. So we all do this, uh, um, we all did this uh, online in a full remote setting. And uh, soon I will tell you uh, how um, to do that, uh, actually uh, improve our capability to reach the goals that we had uh, to achieve. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I'll give back the floor to you, Alice. Thank you, Nicola. So we have seen, uh, I, I, I hope that what you have seen till now gave you a flavor of what uh, we are, of different kind of innovation that are happening in Trentino. So starting from the one mediated and driven by the public administration to the social innovation and vision innovation presented by Alessandro and the open innovation from, uh, from, from Nicola. So we have seen new way of linking, new way of interacting, new way of, uh, of working together, new way of managing uh, events and the innovation and uh, that emerged from the pandemics. So I'm here asking you all of your three, a couple of questions. First of all, I'd like to know from you, um, what, which aspect was more impacted by the COVID in what you are doing in your work and the innovation that you are, um, you, you are doing in, uh, in, in your activities. So, and uh, the second part of this question, this is all, always the first one, what do you hope to bring to the future? Because uh, COVID is a very, was very disruptive for us, but it's not, we have to take the best we can from these, uh, a very dramatic situation and create innovation also from that. So what is the major impact and what do you hope to bring to the future? I, I, I want to start with Matteo because we started as, uh, like this before. And uh, so we can start from you, Matteo. What is your answer on that? Okay, yes. Uh, that's a really good question because um, the way we we did innovation change we do innovation change a lot because of the pandemic uh, mainly the period because of the the need as i mentioned before for a for a faster response so we are forced to use uh, different methods than before um, for example we uh, experimented a, um, a really strong form of collaboration within our organization uh, which, uh, as you can imagine, in a really big organization, especially in the public administration, it's not taken for granted. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was really important to put uh, people of different organizational unit at the same table with different skill, with different knowledge, and to put their, uh, their knowledge to, to build a, a really a project that was, uh, that was uh, effective. 
uh, and also to to focus together to the to the to the user needs uh, and uh, not thinking about uh, um, what uh, uh, in what uh, in which organizational unit we we were working so uh, focusing more I, I, I should say on the project and not more on the a functional organization uh, as uh, as it should be in a, in a, the innovation system um, because the one thing we saw there was uh, it was uh, the importance of having um, cross function cross functional expertise in this project uh, mainly one of the the issues uh, uh, in the past was that uh, uh, technological and yeah, digitalization project, projects were um, given only to uh, ICT specialists, uh, and uh, maybe not uh, not everyone was was involved uh, was uh, seen uh, as a, as a value for the project. Those uh, technological skill, organizational skill. Uh, uh, project management skill uh, were uh, were, were essential, so uh, there wasn't a question to 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 involve them or uh, or not. It was uh, it was necessary. One of the, um, the other innovation that we that we that we witnessed was the we we understand from the not from maybe not from the beginning, but after the first phases of the project, after the first shock, I, sh I should say about uh, of the project. Uh, that uh, involving the user before the uh, the final implementation of the IT solution were uh, one of the keys to anticipate their their needs uh, and to um, manage more more effectively effectively the solution after its implementation. Uh, as uh, Nicola said, the 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 test phase of the in uh, of the solution is a, a really important phase. Uh, so we we gave um, this uh, this digital platform to to uh, stakeholders to to users to test it, and then we took their the information the their experience in order to uh, yeah make uh, slightly changes or to maybe to, to think about uh, other uh, of the procedures. So uh, that was one of the the, the keys for uh, for that period. And so the, to understand also um, having this, this important um, involvement of the user, we were able to understand uh, um, the digital skills of the, of the users because we had to, to, to talk with also with traditional methods like uh, help desk, uh, call center. We, we talked with a lot of users. So we had a, a broad overview of uh, the digital uh, skills that uh, they had and uh, what uh, we had to pay attention to. Okay, I see that we have some uh, connection problem with Matteo, but I think it is clear the message he sent us. So I want just to leave the floor to, to Alessandro and see what he, also from him, uh, what, what is the major impact on the way the project was managed or the way he was doing this innovation and what he wants to bring to the future. Well, I rather, I rather say that um, the impact of the pandemics was pretty, pretty harmful in our case because of uh, it, it being an, an European uh, ecosystem project, in, it was supposed that uh, was based on uh, moving and make exchanging experiences to go different readers and counters and so on. So because actually the, the key word of the project itself was relationship. So uh, the pandemic was really uh, halting all of that. So actually we would rather say that uh, despite the, 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 the initial and the final meeting uh, almost for Two years, non activities has been realized in each of the partner territories. But actually, uh, actually, that called us to reinvent the approaches and the methods and the tools we were using. So, actually, 
we have been uh, forced to fastly move from an, uh, an analogic to a digital setting for the way in which we were used to dialogue and, uh, and consider that actually we have to take on board different stakeholders with uh, different backgrounds, different ages. So it means that we've been forced in, um, roughly speaking, to, to may try to bridge this kind of digital divide. So actually, most of us has been exposed, uh, although we are maybe part of uh, innovation activities or research activities, to different, different tools boards, uh, system of telco, tel telco and so on. So like, but uh, we have been able to, from one side, give the minimum literacy to the people, uh, the users uh, to take on board, uh, but on the other side, try to make it simpler, the approaches. And so for us, actually, it was uh, interesting to, to work on a full digital approach on an hybrid approach. So actually, although people was physically meeting in one country and the other people was uh, interacting uh, remotely in another country, or lastly, whatever possible, and we can say that uh, during the last part of the project, it was possible to have the, the meeting in people, but uh, the, the meeting in persons. Uh, so actually, it was interesting because actually it was also useful to maybe create uh, new approaches that we share with other projects in order to create some sort of um, a guideline, a tool, uh, um, a series of tools that actually could be used for uh, other innovation activities. If I just uh, rather say just one last thing before to, to um, give back the floor to, to our moderator, um, one thing that actually was really emerging, I'll talk uh, the methods uh, and the approaches we use it, is uh, that uh, we are being forced to maybe rescale re it, our activities. So actually, usually we are used, used to think to on a larger scale, but actually we are forced to work, to, work, to, um, to work on a more micro and local scale involving a different actor because only maybe operating on a, at the beginning on a lower scale, we can be able to uh, being able to address and anticipate uh, the creation of a series of solutions, as Matteo said. Thanks, Alessandro. And Nicola, you told us that uh, the UX challenge benefited somehow on uh, the new um, way of, uh, of holding that. So what did you mean with that? Yeah, thanks for asking. So, so what, 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 what has been my experience? As I mentioned, I was leading this uh, European project uh, about replica replicating this UX challenge event in seven countries. And we, we had been building capacity within the consortium across 2019. So at the very beginning of 2020, everything was ready to, you know, to really set up uh, uh, the whole thing in the seven countries. We, we had been uh, you know, pr uh, promoting the opportunity to both uh, students, companies, and researchers. Everything was ready, and the and the pandemics uh, hit. So we had to decide whether to postpone everything, but we, we wouldn't know how much it, we would have uh, to postpone uh, all the operations, or to switch to a, a complete, uh, full remote online uh, setting of operations. And we decided to went for the second because it just wasn't possible to execute the UX challenge as we planned it. Because bottom line, as I mentioned, the, the UX challenge came as a, a two-day face-to-face uh, in-person event uh, um, involving you know, almost 80, maybe more people in the very same room, uh, very same uh, uh, open space uh, for two days, uh, you know, uh, lots of talking, uh, typical hackathon uh, setting, uh, and uh, also, uh, we, we, we used to host it in a place uh, which is called the Contamination Lab in Trento, which is run by the University of Trento. So it wasn't really a place where you wanted to be in March 2000, uh, 2020. So we really had to come up with a new format on the go after having trained all the partners and also the participants on the previous format. So we decided to, uh, to change it. Uh, first of all, everything uh, would have uh, uh, taken place online. Um, and for that reason, we decided to make strong use of shared uh, visual um, online workspaces such as Miro, 
or mural. And I, I, I'm sure that most of you by now have experienced either uh, mirror or mural uh, by now. They are like web apps, so they work on the cloud and they allow you to uh, you know, share information, but also host uh, uh, ideation uh, sessions uh, within a team. And they allow both uh, asynchronous and uh, synchronous teamwork. And since you can put a lot of information and links to external you know, uh, sources, you can really use these uh, online spaces uh, to host a lot of information and to manage real uh, complexity of projects. So uh, we, we, we started using those, uh, um, uh, those workspaces. And, uh, and also we, we decided not only to provide the teams that would have to you know, tackle all the challenges provided by the companies with a blank space, like it was like a, a whiteboard, but we provided them with a template. As I mentioned, uh, the UX challenge is about executing a design sprint, which is a very structured, uh, um, uh, formalized process. So what we did was to actually um, put a template of the design sprint on a mirror board for each of the teams. And that uh, mirror board would be used by both the solvers and the companies to execute the, uh, the design sprint method. So this was something that we, we didn't do in the previous uh, way and in the previous UX challenge format because we, you know, people were meeting face to face, so they didn't really need any, uh, any shared visual workspace, uh, but a, you know, post-its and some, uh, and some uh, uh, papers on, on the walls. So uh, by using these mirror boards, uh, we, uh, we, we made it possible to provide the people with a, a template of the process to be followed. And that really helped us and the participants to follow the process, which was, uh, I mean, I used the method but that was very formalized and, and, and sometimes very uh, complicated to use. Um, and we will keep that in the future. So I'm sure that uh, um, we will, we will uh, switch to a, um, a hybrid setting in the, in the future. We will probably uh, host the, the, the first meeting of the initiative and the last meeting, including the final event, face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, hopefully, uh, again, in, in, the, in a big room altogether. But we will keep some uh, work. The, the main bulk of the problem-solving work uh, will probably taking uh, place uh, online and remotely because that also help uh, uh, people focusing a lot on the problem. When you enter a design thinking processes, ideation, problem solving processes, you really need to, uh, to focus on the problem. You really need to um, work autonomously uh, uh, first and, and then afterwards only afterwards sharing your ideas and your insights with, uh, with the rest of the team members. So, the idea of being everybody in a big uh, in a big room for two days wasn't really appropriate for this kind of event. So we will definitely keep the uh, the hybrid format and also uh, the length of the process changed because initially again it was about a two day uh, event, but we understood that the two days was uh, much too hectic for all the participants, and uh, it, it was a too uh, short time frame for participants to get to any. Uh, uh, mature enough results, and for that reason, uh, we, uh, we we went for a, a one week uh, event, so uh, on, on fully online, and that is something that we uh, we will also keep for the future. So probably we will keep the uh, the the one week time frame. We will keep the use of uh, mirror boards or mural boards, whatever software you decide to use it, because that allows uh, people to uh, use a template predefined. Uh, about the method and the process to be followed. And again, we will keep probably the one week time frame, but again, in a, in a um, hybrid format. So that, that is how you know, the, the pandemic impacted on this event and on the project. But again, you know, uh, some of those impacts uh, um, were for the good. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, I, I'd like to ask you all, all of you another question. So I, I ask you to be very quick in answering and very short because we have not much time, but I, I, something that I, I want to ask because we all know that uh, the pandemics forced also to implement new measures and to move a lot of money to restart, to, to reshape our way to work after this shock. So uh, I, I, I'm asking you, what, what is the starting point for for, for the future. So what are the opportunities that you think were um, more relevant that you can catch 
from from this, um, maybe linked to the money, to the virtualization, or everything that you think this uh, worth talking about. So again, Matteo, that is back with us. <laughs> I leave you the floor. I think the, the opportunity that we have is that, uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, we have now uh, a lot more information about uh, about the, the users, uh, uh, especially, and uh, uh, maybe we we learn how to better address them uh, with uh, different methods than than before, and um, yeah, and also we we learn that uh, we we could we could really work uh, really effective effectively in this uh, in this remote uh, style of uh, working, so we don't really uh need uh, all the the physical presence that we, we used before in order to 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 call to work together in our administration or with uh, different stakeholders and also relation could be really more uh, uh, agile and uh, focus on the on the objective on the investment that we are we are uh, following alessandro from you? Yeah. Uh, when, when we created the project, um, Saturn, uh, we, one, one of our key, key objective was to create a new narrative to try to bridge the gap between, um, between citizens and the landscape and to reconnect with nature. So I talk that um, narrative is still, uh, is still in any case relevant for any case of activities we need to, to take on board to, to solve some of the concurrent challenges that uh, every day at the global level is, um, is, uh, is appearing. But uh, um, it's more and more important the, the way in which, uh, for example, uh, along a specific narrative, to, for example, to keep more simple the understanding of different uh, concepts uh, or approaches, also it would be digital approaches, digital uh, digital uses. Um, it's relevant the dialogue, and the dialogue, but the dialogue itself actually is it could be worthwhile. But actually, um, what what we can what we have learned in particular when we were readapting uh, our our tools and our method is actually the dialogue is relevant whenever it is a part of a process, an, inter an iterative process of capacity building. Capacity building is absolutely relevant, not only for specialists, for people working in the ecosystem, uh, in the ecosystem or research innovation, but actually, as Matteo said at the beginning, within public administration, but not lastly, uh, because there are this need of uh, um, cross-sectoral dialogue that actually need, for example, the reinforcing, the emerging, or maybe the appropriation of specific skills. So actually, through capacity building, probably um, institutions like those one from uh, the research innovation, but also public audits can support different stakeholders to be fully effective, uh, able to cope with uh, emerging challenges and solving uh, at least the local problem, but in any case, actually, that they are the problems that actually has been downscaled from the global level. The last flash from Nicola. Yeah, well, you know, I believe, uh, you know, these disruptions comes with uh, problems, but also with opportunities. I mean, there, there, there are new needs uh, out there from, from us, but also from companies, from our shareholders. So it's about trying to understand what are the new needs uh, and come up with solutions. And, uh, and if we become able to do that, uh, then that will bring more opportunities for us as you know, uh, innovation enablers. I give you an example. Uh, we at HAT, as you may know, are part of many EAT kicks, not only EAT climate kick, but also EAT raw materials. More recently, we have, we have entered EAT manufacturing. So last year, we managed to, uh, and we together prepared a project called Flexming. Uh, which is about providing professional training to companies, especially SMEs, on how to integrate technologies and digital solutions overall for flexible and resilient manufacturing, okay? So if, uh, if COVID-19 didn't come, 
we wouldn't have the chance and the companies wouldn't have the chance to be trained in adopting more, uh, uh, I mean, uh, digital technologies for the flexible and resilient manufacturing, which will impact uh, on their, um, uh, on their uh, innovation capacity overall, besides the fact of uh, uh, combating uh, COVID uh, negative impact. So again, there are opportunities out there. It's just about us. Uh, you know, being capable of uh, uh, reading the new needs and coming up with uh, new solutions for the, for those needs. Thank you very much. I, I think that uh, we, so very very interesting points emerged from this uh, uh, this discussion. The first one, one was that the the emergency, the pandemics, accelerated some processes like digitalization, di like new forms of dialogue, like the. A collecting of data that had the new ways of use this data. And uh, it also helps to uh, start a new form of collaboration and also a new way of thinking of the future. So we start thinking in a different way to the future in more very, um, yes, local, local but globalized manner because everything is, uh, is, 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 uh, is um, acting in the world is really uh, impacting on our scale, so we have to think about our scale, and and also the fact that we have to find to to find out the way to uh, re reinvent our way of innovate and see and um, catch the the new needs and the new opportunities that can come from this. So I think now it's almost uh, four, so we have to close uh, our interesting uh, conversation. Uh, you have seen that uh, I, I, we try to give you a, a, a just some hints of how this, uh, um, uh, this facing uh, the pandemics was um, enacted in, uh, in Trentino. It's not an exhaustive at all. It wanted to be this, but we want to catch these very important points that we want to share with you. And after that, I want to say that I want to remember you that this, uh, this is a first first of, uh, of a series of webinars of Osiris. And uh, I ask your people that are listening now to stay tuned on the Osiris Communication Challenge for update on the, uh, on the upcoming webinars. Thank you all for being here and thank you all for your attention. And thanks, Nicole, Alessandro, Matteo, and the organizers for this conversation. <laughs>